Here we're going to do a standardization titration. We're going to use potassium hydrogen phthalate, which has a molar mass of 204.23 grams per mole. And what we're going to do is really simply we're going to put that in some distilled water to figure out the concentration of a sodium hydroxide solution using titration. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure out about 0.5 grams. And I'm less concerned with the amount that I actually get and more concerned with how much makes it into the flask. So, get some electrostatic charge in there. Okay, so we went a little over, it's okay. So 0 0.903. compared to this, so we're looking at 0.919. Okay. What we're now going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to dissolve it in distilled water. So 0.919 grams of potassium hydrogen phthalate. And we're going to add some phenolphthalein indicator to it so we can start our titration. Just a couple drops. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and prep our burette. So I'm going to take this is about 0.2 molar sodium hydroxide, but of course a lot of contamination possible with it. I'm going to make sure that my stopcock is stopped. We're going to pour a little bit in because we're going to rinse out the burette. Man, that was probably a little more than I'd hoped. What we're not going to do is we're going to let that drain out. And what we're doing now is we're coating the insides of this instead of with water or something else, it's going to be coated with the sodium hydroxide solution. Then we're going to refill that and we are going to start our titration. And we're going to titrate our potassium hydrogen phthalate, 0.919 grams that are present in there, in the presence of phenolphthalein. Okay. So sodium hydroxide, the reason why we're doing this is because sodium hydroxide will absorb a lot of water as well as carbon dioxide from the air we react with the water itself and that will make sodium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate. So really what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get through and see you know, what this actual concentration is. It should be about 0.2, but we don't know exactly what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this up now while this is open. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're now going to go up and take a look at what our volume is. So you can see that we're up near between 0 and 1. So right here is my meniscus, and to me that is between 0.5 and 0.6, it's very close to 0.6. So I'm going to go ahead and call that 0 0.60 milliliters. And then we'll zoom back out. We are now ready to get rid of our waste and start with our titration. Okay, so I went ahead and put a white piece of paper on there so you can actually see this. So when the sodium hydroxide is added, and it's in that high concentration, you're seeing the phenolphthalein change to pink there. What we want to do now is we want to get this to actually go to the point where it just lingers at pink. But that's going to take a little bit of time to get to that. So we don't want to start out too slow or we'll be here all day. And I, of course, am not the most patient for titrations. I do them a lot. But what we want to do is we want to get it where it just changes to the pink color and persists. Instead of having some add in there and then seeing the pink in a region that disappears when it gets swirled.
All right, so at this point we're getting close to the end point. Or we should be. So we're now going to slow this down a little bit. Start to do a few drops at a time. Make sure we don't get that pink color persisting. Looks like there's our end point. And we're at a volume of 23.15. Let's see if I can zoom in on there. So bottom of our thing is right here, there's 23, there's 24, between 23.1 and 23.2. And just for fun, we're going to add a couple more drops to see that pink color really shine through. So we're going to change pH rapidly there. Okay. And that takes us down to 23.25. An extra tenth of a milliliter. So now we can subtract that from our initial volume and figure out what our amounts are. So here are kind of the stats I've collected. I, I know the mass of KHP potassium hydrogen phthalate that I used. I know the initial volume of the sodium hydroxide and the final volume. The difference in that is how much sodium hydroxide it had. The key here is that the moles of KHP is equivalent to, is equal to how many moles of sodium hydroxide I had to add. We are looking at the equivalence point. So we're looking at the points where equal quantities of those two things have been added. And this is monoproduct and this is also a single hydroxide. So they're going to react in a one to one ratio for stoichiometry. So however many moles of KHP I neutralized must be how many moles of the NaOH I've added. And we also know the volume of that. So to find the concentration of that sodium hydroxide, all I would need to do is take this 0 .00, 0.00450 moles of NaOH divided by 0 .00 liters. And plug that into a calculator. That's looking very, very close to 0.2 molar slightly off, and now we have, this is 0 0.199, nope, 0 0.2, hey, look at that, 0, 0, mole. So, that's unlikely, but uh, we'll see how that repeats with other data, but that would be our result of that titration then, is that our concentration of sodium hydroxide is 0 0.200 0 molar, and I'll point out that we have three sig figs and four sig figs, so we have a concentration out of three sig figs, Whereas before, it probably would have been to one without doing the standardization. So that allows us to get a much more precise or accurate or both uh, for future measurements with that sodium hydroxide solution. Okay.